All right, another episode of the Square and Compass podcast. This time we have two uh, distinguished Masons all the way from sunny Arizona, which I'm not jealous, but I'm in Windsor, Ontario, and we have a lot of snow and not a lot of sun right now. So welcome. We have got uh, Worship Brother Dwayne Hoyt and Worship Brother Luke Evans from respectively Prometheus Lodge and Oriental Lodge number 20. Welcome, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So my involvement uh, with uh, our brethren in Arizona kind of started through the Oriental Lodge Book Club. Um, and I believe I saw it first on Facebook with, uh, but contacted, um, contacted Oriental Lodge and, and got in touch with Worship Brother Luke Evans. Uh, and since then, I, you know, you've, shared a really great Masonic initiative that you're working on, um, which we want to talk to the brethren about. And I'll definitely include a link to that initiative in the description to this video. But first, uh, tell me about the uh, Oriental Lodge and the book club, because I've been very much enjoying it. And I think that is a great initiative as well. Sure. Well, as I'll take it back a couple of years as a member of, of Dwayne's Lodge, Prometheus 87, there was a really good, uh, solid friend-to-friend -friend, uh, program that was uh, put on by the district deputy grand master at the time. And it really inspired me uh, that when people are interested in Freemasonry, that we, um, we, we really show them uh, the, the rope, so to speak, on the basics of what Freemasonry is all about. And it's a, it's a bi-directional uh, you know, experience. It's one for the brothers to understand the, the guys that are interested in the Freemasonry, but also the, the other way around. And so I took, I took a little bit of that. Um, and we started to do a, an organized friend to friend club at the lodge at Oriental 20, uh, which I'm a, a past master of, and did that very successfully over the course of about two years. And then COVID hit, you know, in in March, we weren't sure what to do because we couldn't meet on site. And then we had the bright idea of starting up a Zoom club. Uh, one brother had an idea of adding to that forum in that session, a book club. And so we're on our second book. We meet, you know, four, four times a month. Uh, anybody can join people that are curious about Freemasonry, people that are, are Masons themselves uh, to get different perspectives for those that are curious about Freemasonry. And so we've, we've been doing that. Um, we, we have people from probably, on average, uh, you know, four or five different jurisdictions across the world. And, and in total, uh, we probably have, have hosted uh, more than two dozen jurisdictions around the world in our evening Tuesday night book club. And I think that it's, you kind of touched on it, you know, we've got, uh, we're dealing with almost every jurisdiction I think is either severely limited or if not completely um, suspended their in-person meetings um, for several months, if not going on a year. Uh, and just the, the importance of keeping not only Freemasons connected with, with the craft and with each other, but candidates as well. Because if a candidate put an application in to join a lodge in um, say February or March, he may be looking at one year, um, you know, it's one thing to go a year before you can have your, um, uh, before you can be initiated. But in this case, it's in some cases, you know, it's a year of the lodge going dark and, and in some cases, maybe no contact at all between a lodge and an applicant or a candidate. Uh, so just how important has it been for the book club to maintain contact with applicants and with those interested in Freemasonry and kind of keep that light and that the desire within them uh, alive so that once we get through this, they want to, uh, they still want to join. I, mean, I think it's hard to tell, uh, but on the, on the flip side, I just, I just think that even myself, I would have, I would have lost interest, you know, just in Freemasonry itself, if I didn't have any contact with any of, any of my brothers, any other lodges, any people that are interested in Freemasonry. And so it's, it's safe to say that 
we've, you know, we've saved our lodge and maybe some other lodges because we are partnering with some other lodges throughout Arizona that people come to our friend to friend book club uh, who are interested in Freemasonry because those lodges get out and say, hey, Oriental 20 is doing this, come understand more about Freemasonry, come hang out with us online. Uh, so I think, I think really it, it has saved us because I think potentially if, if we wouldn't uh, have done this and other groups around the world would have done this, I think it really would have uh, put a big crutch on Freemasonry for, you know, at least a couple of years to come for us to kind of catch up and, and re-engage the, the public, re-engage our brothers and re-engage people that are interested in joining the fraternity. I can, I can attest as a, uh... I think I've uh, attended the last at least four or five. I can attest that they are terrific evenings. Uh, it's a terrific club. They definitely help, you know, me grow within the craft and not become lazy or complacent because it's easy, especially when you don't have in-person meetings, to uh, forget about the, uh, you know, your uh, your instruction for a daily advancement of Masonic knowledge. And it's nice to know that at least on Tuesdays, I've got, uh, I've got that, uh, I can check that, uh, that off the list. So well done on organizing uh, the book club and I look forward to coming back next week. Thank you, Marshall. But in the, the interim, the other initiative, which I wanna discuss, and there will be a link in the description to this video is Freemason Connect, which uh, both, uh, both of yourselves, Worship Brother Dwayne and Worship Brother Luke, created uh, in conjunction or created together. And I understand that behind you, uh, that looks pretty familiar, Luke. That looks like the uh, the logo there. So what can you guys tell me about Freemason Connect? Kind of start with, with the impetus. What made you think, what is it? And what made you think it was important to create? You, you want this one, Luke? No? Okay. <laughs> um, from the very beginning, we, we wanted to create something that Masons from the, around the world can enjoy without going on uh, another <clears throat> social media platform. We wanted this app to be a, a one-stop shop for master Masons from around the world. Uh, as you know, in most social media outlets, there are, uh, some know the term, cowans and eavesdroppers. So we wanted to make sure that we had a safe and secure location where Masons, verified Masons from around the world could meet. <clears throat> and getting the, the idea and the design going, um, we, we had noticed that this was going to be uh, quite an uphill battle, especially with you know, verifications and the platform that we decided to use because we want to use something very simple and clean, um, which Luke is the uh, the engineering aspect and the design of things. And, and I come in and say, hey, we need to, I'm more or less the, the modifier. Does that make sense, Luke? Is that about right? <laughs> Yeah, you call it, you've called yeah. yourself the, the, the ground pounder as well. We're really yeah. getting to you. Uh, to people within uh, the, the community and getting some interest yeah. in what we're up to. You know, and Brother Cameron, you brought up the fact of <clears throat> before about keeping engaged and, and remembering who you are in the book club with Worshipful Luke. When, when we come up with the design of this and the ideas of, of engagement, we wanted to make sure that we wanted to use all aspects of masonry of, you know, the brother love, relief, and truth. Um, and in, in, in our uh, lectures and, and obligations, we hear a lot about charity. So we wanted to create something and give back. So that's why with, with the app, with the subscribers, um, part of the proceeds will go to the charities, which is chosen by, by the user. So we wanted to use that function as well as along with, with education, um, because with probably over 70% of the lodges in the world are still closed. We thought education of spreading uh, and sharing the education from around the world would be also uh, something to entice members to use. So the, the digital space, you know, in general, 
for any organization, any group, any individual, you know, the digital space um, is, you know, so this is being recorded January 30th. Um, you know, the last few days we've seen and, and heard about, you know, the Reddit and GameStop and, and um, the, I think everybody knows about algorithms and social media, things of that nature. You know, the digital space is one of those areas that it seems like more and more people are both being drawn to, but also wary of. You know, are you are you hearing from any any Freemasons any concerns about getting involved in the digital space? Like they may not want to for privacy reasons. And I guess what would you or they're concerned about how Ground Lodge may feel about it. And I guess what would you you say to those Masons who have those concerns and what have you done to alleviate them? You know, in, in the verification process, though those uh, have come up. Um, we, we inform all the users that we we are requesting that a dues card as some sort of master Mason good standing certificate be um, basically required in the process. We have had members that co have come up and said, um, you know, is this Grand Lodge approved? Um, or I, I feel very uncomfortable because of the the, uh, the groups out there, you know, being <clears throat> men being basically trying to be recruited by Illuminati. Um, so we have ran into this and we've, we've spoken to them um, over chats, uh, over email to let them know that their information uh, after they're verified is basically, <clears throat> is basically destroyed. We have no use for it. The only thing that we, the use that we, the only thing that we need to use is are they verified? Are they in good standings? We don't want people, uh, brothers in this, the, the Cowans and eavesdroppers in here are selling you know, Masonic goods from places we know are masonry is illegal. So we have, we go through these verifications and we've had these questions. And I would say out of uh, all the members that we've have, um, one has come up and is very leery. So he's uh, choosing not to join right now because he wants to see the process and the app grow, which is completely understandable. <clears throat> And the ones that, uh, that we can't verify are basically just not allowed into the app. Um, the Grand Lodge portion of things is what does your Grand Lodge think of? Well, it's not really up to my Grand Lodge. We have several Grand Lodges from the United States and, and foreign Grand Lodges <clears throat> that support the app and the verification process, but it's not sponsored by Grand Lodge because this is an app for Master Masons not just Grand Lodge. And I, you know, we talked about this a little bit be, before we, we started, right? I'm a, I've always been a firm believer that any type of, of change, um, positive change, maybe it's the libertarian streak in me, will always start at a local or individual level. And then if there is a uh, strong, um, you know, administrative body or grand lodge body, it, it will it will find those good ideas and those good projects, and then implement them and, and promote them to the the wider, uh, you know, the wider jurisdiction, the wider state or province. Um, yeah, one concern I have with kind of Freemasonry in general, and you touch on this a little bit, is. Um, Sometimes it feels as though there's a, a lack of willingness or desire to take a risk or to try something new or to try something different. Uh, and it falls under these, these guys, you know, these, these statements of, I want to hear what Grand Lodge says first, or we need to, you know, if you ever want to kill my, my, I used to say, this is worshipful master. If you ever want to kill an idea and lodge, just say you're going to form a committee. Because very quickly that committee, uh, we couldn't come to an agreement. We couldn't meet. You know, that's one thing I love about this initiative and Freemasons Connect is you know it's you guys. Uh, you both saw uh, an opening. You saw a need for something in the digital space, 
and then you implemented it. And, you know, if it is successful, which I certainly hope and believe it will be, I'm certainly very happy to be on it and have found it very helpful. Um, you know, other lodges, other people will join and it will catch on and it will grow. But I very much, I very much more support that process than, you know, uh, forming a committee, going to Grand Lodge. You know, if you see, a, if you see a need, and you can, you can address it. Uh, you know, I I applaud both of you guys for addressing it in such a, a positive way because it is a terrific, terrific app. Can you talk about some of the features within that app? Um, that brethren can take advantage of? Absolutely. I think one of the, the things that we can go back and forth doing on, on some of the, the benefits that, that uh, we're seeing and the benefits that we envision. One of the uh, things that, that we couldn't do before this app was say, hey, I, I need some help. Who do, I, who do I go to? Usually you would, you would call your lodge secretary, um, but this app gives you the ability from a, a, a locational standpoint, wherever you are in the world, to be able to reach out to somebody in a particular jurisdiction and say, hey, I'm, I'm in need of help. Whether it's, you know, uh, I'm, I'm on the side of the road, you know, it's not an emergency, I'm not gonna call, you know, to, to get towed, or I'm a, I'm a tourist, you know, in, a, in a, a place I'm not familiar with, I'm having issues or I need some advice. It was so difficult to do prior to, to us coming up with this idea and, and putting this app out there. Uh, there are uh, push notifications uh, that are built into the app where uh, if you are subscribed to a particular region, let's say, you know, on Ontario, Canada, uh, you can go ahead and put a note in there for a specific topic. We have topics, you know, Dwayne talked about before, which was, which are, you know, based on aligned with brotherly love, relief, and truth. And, and be able to get a response from, from someone who is subscribed to that region or, or you know, lives in that region. I think that was, the, that was a big draw for me to say, you know what, this just minus the education piece, minus you know, the, the other elements that we have, even the, the charity piece, I think, I think just having something like that uh, really drew me in and got me 100% uh, engaged to, to putting something out there that could help in that, in that area. Dwayne, do you want to talk a little bit about the charity piece and, and kind of how uh, how we want to get the charity uh, endeavors out at a at a global level to help jurisdictions or lodges that are in need of additional um, funding? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things, Cameron, that uh, that came up in these discussions, along with the SOS function or the help and push notifications, was you know, especially with COVID, <clears throat> how, how can this app give back? Um, during COVID, I, I helped spearhead a fundraiser to raise over $25,000 for Arizona food banks for those who are losing their jobs. And I went off of that idea um, with, with Luke about how can we put this into the app? And it came up to, <clears throat> if, if we ask brothers to subscribe, we want, in, we want them to know where their subscription is going. So the idea was that a brother subscribes and they're able to go into the region of charity endeavors. Each region will be allowed to submit like an essay or an application of somewhat of why should Freemason Connect give part of the proceeds to your Masonic charity. Once the moderators and everyone has chosen basically the top five, we put the top five on Freemason Connect for the entire, for all the app users to see, and the user will get to choose where the money goes. So the, the function of the money comes out of our hands and it goes into the hands of the user. And from everybody that we've talked to from a Grand Lodge level to a Blue Lodge level or Pin and Body level, absolutely love this. Now, the question has come up, does it need to be a Masonic charity? Uh, could it be an appended body, say, like Demo Lay or Rainbow Girls or Job's Daughters? Absolutely. If your lodge sponsors a youth group, you can put in an essay or why we should send money to that youth group. So that is um, part of the function of the
charity endeavors was to basically give back to the to the community. Now the subscription process, uh, I want to talk about quickly because you know it, uh, when I I'm I am a subscriber, uh, but obviously there's, there's different uh, you know levels. When I first signed up for it, right, the sign up process itself was completely free. Uh, the subscription process was. Uh, you know, in addition, very, you know, incredibly cost effective and, and well worth addition. But tell me about that process. So if a brother is interested in joining Freemason Connect uh, by clicking on the link down below, what are the steps he's going to take to first join and then become a subscriber? And kind of what are the, the levels that he will go through uh, in this app? Right. So it's fairly simple. Like you, like you said, uh, there is uh, I think we have Dwayne. We have four questions, four easy questions to to, to answer, uh, and then like like Dwayne said, uh, we will we will reach out to you after you have uh, answered those questions. Are you a master mason in good standing? What lodge are you from? What jurisdiction is that? So on and so forth. Dwayne will uh, and and the verifications team will reach out to that that person individually, request uh, proof, like you said, of being a master mason in good standing which has been a lot of fun, actually. Uh, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne uh, tells me stories every day about uh, this jurisdiction, you know, in, in a far off land does things a little differently. How do we verify? Anyway, uh, we, we get through that process and then you are uh, added to the app where you can see uh, hosts like, like ourselves uh, with um, information of, of, about uh, things that are happening, about the app and so forth. And then you have the option to subscribe to the app and become a premium member. Uh, the, on our platform, the, the least that we could uh, do was 99 cents US per, per month. And what that does is that pays for the platform. It pays for the uh, charitable uh, work. And it pays for some of the administrative costs like our, our email system and, and things of that nature. Uh, and then from, from there, uh, they are able to see every single region uh, that a member is a part of. So we currently have roughly 35 different jurisdictions uh, throughout the world. We're adding more every week. Uh, I might be behind on a couple, <laughs> but that's that's kind of where we're, we're at right now. Uh, you also gain um, access to the charitable endeavors area where you can you can vote on where the charitable dollars go as well as the uh, Masonic education area, which is nicely laid out. You can understand what events are happening throughout the world, uh, live events, uh, recorded events, and so forth uh, for, for folks that, that want to attend a Masonic education throughout the world. I just attended one a couple of weeks ago uh, for Sacramento, California, a lodge that uh, had a, a building that was over 100 years old. Uh, we got a great a great tour of of the time capsule that they uh, that they had gotten. I mean, I would have never never known about that uh, without an app that really brings people together. Uh, and especially during COVID times, a lot of these educational events are online through Zoom or or other online uh, presentations. You know, to to add on to the education, uh, Cameron, um, Luke has gone to a couple of these events. We've had brothers from England uh, post live educational events on here. You would not be able to see those unless um, a brother wants them to see it through the free portion of the app or through the subscription portion. Uh, Luke and I have uh, are keeping on education. We have spoken to a brother uh, in Tombstone, Arizona. Tombstone is known for the OK Corral shootout. McClary's, you know, and the herbs and all that. Uh, Chris Douglas just happens to be the, ed, the basically the expert of Freemasonry of Tombstone. And this is one of those things that we're going to be doing for subscribers, a live event of him doing the history of Freemasonry of Tombstone in their lodge, which is the original lodge above Shefflin Hall that still operates today. So it's things like that, that you would not be able to see if you were using another social media platform. But on this platform, brothers um, have that opportunity to, to see. This is one of those 
other things that a subscriber has the opportunity uh, to see is that unique education, which I have seen this education um, and it is basically one of a kind. You'll never see it anywhere else. And Chris feels safe that he's presenting to master majors in good standings. He doesn't Absolutely. Have to worry about uh, you know watching you know watching what he says. Uh, we can we can guarantee uh, it, it to him. Um, you know, with with a reasonable uh, amount of um, you know caution. Obviously, this is not a a platform or form where we uh, should be sharing. Um, the secrets of Freemasonry, uh, but at least uh, we have a forum that we can talk um, talk openly uh, about things that are happening in, in our jurisdiction or throughout the world as it relates to Freemasonry. Where do you guys, um, and I'll leave this open for both of you, uh, this is more a general question uh, as somebody's banging above me. Where do you guys see kind of the role of education in Freemasonry, or, or not the role so much as the the process or the the manner in which education is is done in Freemasonry uh, changing kind of post post COVID? Because I I've been wondering, and this kind of applies to the app, but also to the book club and just presentations in general. You know, when a lot of of Masons have grown used to. You know, being able to see and and you know every day, if you want, take part in education sessions virtually, um, because they're not attending lodge in person and they're not getting those in person educational sessions. Do you think that the educational component will remain online and with more virtual sessions, even once we return to lodge, or will there be an amalgamation of in person and virtual events, or will you see you know lodges? you know, live streaming educational uh, presentations within their lodge rooms. I guess, how do you see the educational component kind of changing in a, a post COVID world? I think, uh, I think we've, we've had enough discussions with, with brothers, uh, at least in our jurisdiction, uh, that were a little skeptical uh, of, of online coaching, uh, online mentoring, online education. And I think, I think we've turned that corner. I, I think we've, we've realized that we can do it in a, in a safe way, uh, in, a, in a valuable way, uh, where, whereby uh, it, it can act as a new norm for us in, in conveying information, whether that's uh, education and, and so forth. I think we've, we've proven, proven that out. Uh, I know Dwayne is very passionate about, about education uh, he's had some some great conversations with with brothers about it. Uh, I'd like to Dwayne uh, defer to, to you uh, to give your perspective as well. The the education portion, I think, uh, Cameron is is leading in, into a new direction. There's a modernization that's happening in masonry that that a lot of us believe that needs to take place, and part of that is education. I think the post COVID, whenever that may be, um, the apple give lodges the opportunity to have open house education where everybody is welcome, including candidates and those just off the street to able to basically put this out on a live stream on the app. So it can be used for, for both processes. I know a lot of lodges are a lot of brothers right now with the lodges that are open in our state are just uneased right now about going. They're just really uncomfortable. And I think if, if a lodge has, the equipment, the opportunity to do an open house education, and they put it on Freemason Connect. I think it it'll the the education will be shared from around the world. I mean, who wouldn't see? Who would love to see a tombstone Freemason education? Me, I would love to see an education from England. You know, uh, Roslyn's Chapel from the site, the location itself. <clears throat> I think the the updating of education needs to take place and, and the app will allow to do this. If a brother feels very uncomfortable about right now going, um, then he has the opportunity to at least see it live on the app and to ask us questions. Um, I think right now this, the, the education is real scarce. Most of the education that I see is, is the same old education. You know, what, what's, what's there new? 
when when Chris Douglas performed the Freemasonry of Tombstone education at my, at my home launch in 2019, as I became the worship master, we stopped counting heads at 40 people and people just kept coming and coming and coming. So it's that unique education that I think brothers are really starving for. And I think with the app, we're able to share that unique education. How do you, uh, I've yet to, to witness or see any negativity uh, on the app. It's all been very positive and very um, re respectful discussions, no negativity, but you know, we are seeing on other social media platforms uh, a great deal of negativity and polarization between Hey, you know, we've all, we've all read some of these, some of the comments that could pop up on Twitter and Facebook. Um, how do you, or how would you, or have you addressed kind of concerns about increased polarization, negativity? Uh, it seems like a lot of that may already be dealt with just based on the verification process, which will keep out, you know, it, it'll ensure that you have Masons in there and not, you know, rabble rousers or people looking to scam. Uh, but is that something that you are paying attention to and thinking about as you move forward with the app? Absolutely. Yeah, we, we thought about this very early on. We understand that men, regardless of their affiliation uh, to, uh, to Freemasonry, uh, are, are going to have differences of opinion. And so uh, as, part of, as part of that, uh, as hosts, um, uh, as well as moderators that we bring on for specific uh, jurisdictions uh, to, um, to, to continue to preach, practice what, what you preach uh, as far as our, our obligations as an apprentice, fellow craft and, and master masons and beyond, uh, that, that you have a, a duty uh, to, to represent uh, yourself, represent your community and, and so on and so forth uh, to be an upstanding citizen. And so I think we, we uh, Dwayne and I are, are very um, concerned uh, about that topic, and we want this to be a, you know, a great environment for, for everyone. So, um, you know, we are we're currently, I would, I would say, in the, uh, the forming stage. Uh, we will uh, probably hit a storming stage at some point uh, as, as we grow, and we will have uh, some, some members that will, um, you know, test, maybe test the boundaries of, of uh, Freemason communication. And uh, that's, you know, that's an opportunity for, for us uh, to bring people back into um, alignment uh, and understand, you know, what the benefit of the application is uh, for everyone. And uh, if we want to keep it, uh, uh, you know, going in, in a positive direction, uh, we just have to, to say so. And that's, that's part, of, part of being a leader. Uh, it's part of being a, a Freemason. I think we can do that in a, in a constructive way uh, such that, uh, you know, It'll it'll grow with uh, uh, with less uh, of that of that friction if if we you know continue to practice what we preach. And that I think that's kind of the you know most fascinating question about the social media sphere in general, at least moving forward, is um, you know it. Are they platforms versus uh, utility, you know, public utilities? Are they publishers versus um, networks? Like, what what is the the role a social media platform has in relation to what's being posted on its site? Um, and certainly, you know, we've all seen the news stories about you know Facebook, Twitter, and kind of the the line that they're trying to walk. Um, I think that, you know, Masonic networking sites or when, when Freemasonry goes into the digital sphere, and I include this podcast and other podcasts with that is, um, you know, what responsibility do, do I have for what might be said on my podcast by guest as it relates to the craft or anything is same thing with, uh, with a networking site. Um, so yeah, I guess just more, even in general, if you like, like your views on 
on that dynamic and, and that tension between providing people with the freedom to, to network and say how they feel about any topic versus the challenges that can come from that um, misinformation, all that type of stuff. I mean, you know, in, at our lodges, we kind of have instructions around how to deal with conflict. Certainly in the first degree, you're given instructions as to how to deal with the conflict. The digital space, it's not as clear what, what that process would look like exactly. Um, but I suspect it will be coming up more and more in all facets of the internet in uh, at least the next several months until we kind of get things right out somehow. You know, Cameron, with with the app and terms and agreements, we 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 touch on um, some of those some of those things that you had just mentioned. The terms and agreements <clears throat> we expect brothers to elevate themselves, to abide by their obligations. You know, not to talk about ritual on the app. I think a lot of the lodges and a lot of the jurisdictions have. We don't speak of politics and religion because of the unjust conversations that can come out of that. I've seen it myself on social media where brothers have blasted each other in a way that, in my opinion, has I'm just shocked by it. So far, the, what we've seen in the app is brothers have, when they've used the app, it's almost like they've tailored themselves on what they could and should not say, which is kind of what Luke and I were hoping for. This is a Masonic app to share education, to communicate with brothers around the world about Freemasonry, not about politics, not about uh, religions, not about uh, groups that are protesting. We, 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 we don't discuss those things in Lodge. And what we've seen in the app so far, brothers haven't discussed that as well. It's almost like a tailored app almost, which is uh, kind of the pattern that, that we've seen. And we appreciate that. Now, if a brother wants to talk about those things, uh, at least two brothers to say, hey, I'd like to talk to you about a few things. There is a chat function where they can talk privately about it. Luke and I are monitoring the, the homepage or the dashboard continuously. Uh, we get a notification that any uh, us and moderators get a notification that anytime anything's posted, so we can monitor that. You know, the ones things that we're taught to have an intent to bear an instructive tongue. We haven't had to use that in the app yet because these are verified master masons using a safe and secure application. Uh, like I said before, it's almost like they when they come into the app, it's almost like they're treating it as like a, a tiled uh, location, which is kind of unique to what we're seeing. The, the interface, I want to touch on that quickly. The, um, it is, uh, I've, always, I've found it incredibly user-friendly with everything I've posted there, you know, sharing links to, to the podcast and articles I've written. Uh, I found it, uh, it's a very user-friendly interface, very intuitive. Can you tell me a little bit about the process of, that went into designing the interface? Um, and just, yeah, uh, yeah, the process of designing it, what you decided to focus on, and I can just say for myself, uh, I find it very intuitive, very easy to use, uh, very clean looking is the thing that really struck me about it. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So uh, Dwayne and I took a lot of time with this. Uh, we, we really wanted to hit this out of the park. Uh, at the same time, keep it simple. Uh, I, my background is in software development and, and IT project management. So I had a leg up in understanding where we should probably start and, and where we should where we should go. And at this point, uh, completely simple. Let's let's work on uh, the the um, tenets of Freemasonry first: brotherly love, relief, and truth. So we have those those areas uh, where brothers can participate on a jurisdictional level or whatever level you know whatever region they they want to participate in. Uh, and um, be, you know, be able to, um, um, you know, construct a dialogue as they go in a very, like you said, very user-friendly way to uh, post text-based uh, messages, post articles that they can create themselves, um, almost like a Word document, a Word processor 
uh, functionality, um, as as well as uh, events. Uh, you can you can create an event, a recurring event, just like you can do on, you know, Google Calendar, for example. And instead of figuring out who you should share it with, uh, it's everyone that is subscribed to that particular region. Uh, and by default, when you do uh, subscribe, you are you are subscribed to all regions worldwide. So you'll get information on all that uh, that is posted by by any member. So I think the member base piece was important to us. You know, we're only we're only two two past masters, and you you know you know about past masters, right? Uh, you're 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 one yourself. Now we we can only do so much, and so that's where uh, this app, uh, unlike some of the other ones that we've seen, not just Masonic apps, but other apps we've seen where the control aspect was so important to the creators that it inhibited open communication and the progression of the app. And so this allows members to be able to, to do all that uh, functionality that I just described. And um, with our you know, um, hosting and uh, moderation, uh, we, we can, as a, as a team, as one big team, and I, I you know, Wayne can maybe talk later about the numbers and, and the projections of where we're heading as far as membership on the app. Uh, it, it's going to, it's going to live un, unto itself. It's going to be, um, you know, a growing organism as, as folks understand uh, how they can use it to, um, you know, to their benefit in learning or their, their benefit to their lodge for education or, or any other, um, mechanism that, that we build in there in the future, including, the, you know, of course, the charity aspect. I think what I love the most about it, there's no side ads, plain and simple. You know, <laughs> if, if you use another uh, social media platform, you have to scroll through everybody else's stories and their life and this and that, and then the ads on the side. When you use this app, you are in the app as a user and as a contributor. And we, we want users to be the contributor and the driving force of this app. We, we had a post the, the other day from a brother on here who posted uh, an original, uh, and I, I didn't even know this even existed till just now. He posted a picture of an original Nazi concentration camp patch that Masons had to wear while imprisoned during World War II. I'm, I was fascinated by that, and I've never even heard of anything like that. So that sparked up tons of, of communications of like, hey, where did you get this, and what's the history behind this specific patch? You know, and the cleanliness of this app allows you to scroll right to these things, and the positive feedback that we received, you know, Brother Cameron, from what you just said, it's clean, it's simple, and we're, we're, we're getting some feedback. And with, with touching base on what Luke said earlier, the regions, the, the, the SOS and the, the other things, if you can turn off every notification you want or turn it on, and if we decide to go see Cameron up in Canada when it's not snowing, because I don't like the snow, um, Luke and I, or another user, can turn on the notifications and seeing what's going on in that region. And they love that part, part of it well, because it gives them control of the app, not the app controlling them. There's also, I'd like to mention, there's also built-in functionality that allows members and ourselves, we're members too, right, to understand what's hot. So a post that has a lot of engagement, like, like the post that Dwayne just described, there is a, a discovery page, you just click on discovery, and you can find out what's what's hot, what the hottest region is, and also what masons are within your general area. And also what masons in your general area are, are currently online with the app. Uh, so it really helps uh, members to engage. Uh, and, and, you know, we're hoping find a lot of uh, value out of it. Um, one thing that, that we're not talking about with with the digital space is that these educational uh, posts that we make that are recorded and the posts that are recorded, those are going to live on into perpetuity. You know, when you go to a, an education event at your, your lodge, maybe 10, 12 guys will, will ever see it because it's not recorded. 
this gives someone who just joined the app an endless amount of, of education and knowledge right off the bat. You're not sharing it with just a couple hundred folks at your lodge. You're sharing it with potentially millions over, over time. And so I think that is a, a massive benefit, uh, not just with the app, but just in general, uh, when things are electronic. Go back and see, see things that were, were posted. You never know, 30, 40 years ago, if, if we uh, continue uh, on with the same platform with the app, for example. You, uh, Worship Brother Luke, you mentioned uh, that uh, your, uh, your brother, Worship Brother Dwayne, may be able to talk about some of the numbers uh, related to the app, kind of where it is and where it's projected to go. Uh, so I am terrible at math, so I will definitely leave this to uh, Worship Brother uh, Dwayne to um, talk about the, the numbers aspect of it. So the, the numbers... Um, is actually very interesting. Um, when Luke and I decided to launch this early, we launched this uh, app six, I think it was six weeks early. Is that right, Luke? We're like, you know what? Let's just get off the pot and do it. And fortunately for us, the other social media platforms has been perfect for us to advertise. We were, uh, when we did our very first social media post on another platform to say, hey, use this app and this what is what the app allows you to do. It's a verification, master mason, the regions, all these things. The numbers completely exploded. I think we had uh, 50 brothers and within three days wanting to join. And that was just based off of uh, a couple of posts on other platforms. So right now we have over a, a hundred members and the app is not even uh, basically just for this month alone. If, if we don't advertise, word of mouth is very difficult right now because not a lot of, of not every lodge is meeting. So we continue to use the other ones. We anticipate at least the hope is by the, the end of 2021 that we're hoping to have um, at least 10,000 members in this. Now, mind you, we haven't gone into phase two or three of our marketing uh, plan yet. Um, but that's what we're anticipating by the end of the year. We're having more brothers uh, come in than we are rejections, which is nice. The verification process for the most part has been sort of entertaining um, because we, uh, a couple weeks ago, we, we had um, a woman from the Grand Lodge of Istanbul, Turkey for women of Masons try to join. Now that is a uh, a lodge or a jurisdiction for the most part is not recognized. So we unfortunately had to re reject her. Um, we have other lodges that, um, that are not recognized trying to join. They have been rejected. So the numbers we anticipate are hopefully by the 10,000 by the end of the year. And that's verified master masons, by the way. I, uh, I got to, I have yet to have any brethren on this podcast from Arizona. So I have to talk to you guys about Freemasonry in Arizona before There's no we, snow uh, here where I'm at. How's that? <laughs> well, I'm going to move there and sleep on your couch because there's a lot of snow here. Uh, <laughs> even more in uh, Winnipeg where I'm, I'm from originally. But right now, uh, so in my jurisdiction, the Grand Lodge of Canada in the province of Ontario, uh, we have had our in-person meetings, meetings suspended since uh, March of 2020. Right now, um, our, our meetings are suspended until the end of April. Um, and our Grand Lodge communication is going to be virtual. Uh, how is the, the Grand Lodge uh, what steps has the Grand Lodge of Arizona taken? Um, are your meetings suspended there as well? What are you looking at going back? Um, what are lodges doing in terms of maintaining, you know, keeping with members or um, possible benevolence? I guess just how, how has Arizona Freemason responded to this uh, fun situation we all find ourselves in? There's actually, there, there's two answers to, to that question. And, and I'll let Luke answer 
is because his life right now is not currently meaning where mine is. So what's happening in, in Arizona um, is that we have been given the directive to follow CDC guidelines, uh, also uh, federal and local guidelines from, from our governor when he's issued his executive orders. So we were we are following those very carefully and it's monitored by Grand Lodge officers. If lodges are not complying with these guidelines, obviously we want, uh, they're taken to the side and given good counsel because we don't want the, the, the spread of this virus going any further than it already has. And with Arizona being a hot spot right now of cases and that numbers actually have gone down, <clears throat> we, are, we have been advised to govern ourselves accordingly. Now the lodges that don't meet, they are technically allowed uh, through our Arizona constitution, the stated meeting must take place, which in the stated meetings they're allowed to do virtually. Um, there are certain rules to those stated meetings, which I probably shouldn't go over, but right now my lodge is meeting. We are following guidelines, but if a brother decides not to go, that is completely, uh, their choice uh, and I think Luke your lodge is not meeting um, so that you could probably answer your that question your your half lot better than I can right as a as a past master uh, I only I only kind of get the uh, uh, the the updates after things have been decided I'm not a uh, not a, not currently a trustee as well so I'm just a friend to friend guy right, that we talked about earlier uh, that is that is my job. So actually, uh, it looks like, and this is this is news to, to probably you, uh, that we will be meeting in person uh, next Tuesday for our stated meeting. Um, so uh, that was a, a, a decision that was, uh, I think, made about a week and a half ago. Uh, and you never know, it could change. We, we may not be meeting, but no, uh, I, I plan on uh, attending Lodge on uh, Tuesday. So we did not meet for uh, for the longest uh, time you know, last year, and it was it was difficult. You know, it was difficult. Uh, I think on on everybody. Every lodge has has different situations. Whether you you own the building, uh, you know, you have demographics that are, um, you know, that are that are older. You have a, uh, everyone has their their opinions, uh, and I think all those were taken into consideration. Uh, by our worship master last year, we have a, a new incumbent worship master um, uh, as of as of uh, December, uh, who who is also um, listening uh, to to all the members, to the trustees, to his pedestal officers and and other officers, uh, to make those decisions. And and unfortunately, uh, this is this is not an easy thing to to do when it's a it's a moving target. Um, so I I you know. Um, I know that, that we are, um, as a state, having uh, stated meetings, meetings in person, having degrees, obviously, in person. Uh, and um, it's really, like Dwayne said, up to uh, the specific lodges themselves to govern, govern themselves accordingly uh, so that uh, whatever we do is, is well thought out, it, it's safe, and, and it aligns with uh, best practices. Uh, and again, through the, the United States Centers for Disease Control guidelines that uh, that they post and, and update. What about on the um, benevolence or uh, communal support side? Certainly, the there's the health toll um, related to this, but there's also an economic toll related to, you know, uh, shutdowns, loss of business are, to your knowledge, um, I don't know if you can speak to this on a, a Grand Lodge basis or to what you know, are lodges in Arizona seeing either an increase in requests for benevolence or is there more charitable endeavors in terms of, you know, donating personal protective equipment, PPE, things of that nature, uh, any type of community uh, programs or supports in that way. Uh, Luke, what about Oriental? I know your, your rules at Oriental 20 have, are quite different from my home lodge. Um, I know each lodge uh, 
must meet a certain standard when it comes to the health and the safety of the members. And those must be monitored and met and recorded. Uh, the community outreach has, has taken a hit. Um, it's been very difficult to raise funds for charities when you can't go to an event of a certain size, you know, and then practice the, I call it not social distancing, but physical distancing because you are physically remaining uh, apart from, from another person. It, it has been difficult. It really has. Um, I know some of the fundraisers that I did when I was in the East was kids with cancer. Went to a weekend event, raised seven hundred dollars in one day, and donated the funds to that. We're not able to, right now, do that. I know a lot of lodges. Um, we we've cut dinners, so we're not able to raise funds and donations through dinners before lodge. <clears throat> we're not able to um, go to certain places because they're closed now. So th it, it has taken a hit, and it's 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 been a trickle effect all the way from. A uh, Grand Lodge level to a Blue Lodge level down to um, to the youth groups. Everyone's been taking a hit. Uh, I know some members have asked me, why should I pay dues when I'm not able to go? And I completely understand that. I really do. Um, you know, but but how how do we how do we work around that? I think Masonry's foundation is to is to make good men great. You know, that aspect that we're all taught. My lodge over COVID gained 10 candidates. Uh, and it's based off of ideas that Worshipful Brother Luke has with his online book to book, you know, his book club and his uh, friend to friend club. It's based off of, off of that. So we were able to still get candidates and they're still able to meet us, but how are we able to give back to the community? And that has been probably the, the biggest challenge. The, the dues thing that you, you mentioned, <clears throat> Mm -hmm. news concern that's an interesting point i think it illustrates something i've been struggling with or i think freemasonry i should say has been struggling with which is the connection the, the way in which people connect or its members connect to it because my view on for example payment of dues is that, you know, if, for example, I get so sick of this snow and I decide to move to Arizona. Uh, you got a fourth I, bedroom. And then I move into your, your fourth bedroom. I don't take up much space. Uh, you only have to move there. Uh, I can't just, you know, stop paying rent to my apartment and just leave because it's still, you know, it's still my apartment, mm -hmm. um, whether I'm physically present or not. Um, I think that the thing about my concern with Freemasonry, and maybe this is something that Freemason Connect can assist with, is it seems like so many of our members don't feel connected to the craft unless they are <coughs> in their day-to-day -day lives or that it is a, you know, a part of their life or even a home, even if they may not physically be there, it still represents a home, you know, their Masonic home. You know, to me, uh, it's as much my home as my apartment, uh, as my condo. And I think that that just goes to show, you know, I've heard the same thing uh, from brethren talking to, you know, nationally, internationally, this idea of, you know, why should dues be paid? Why should assessments on temples be paid if we can't use them or meet or attend? Which I just think, it's a symptom of a deeper problem, which is, you know, members not feeling sufficiently connected to their lodge or to the craft. Um, and perhaps it's one of the reasons and issues is the lack of Freemasonry on a digital space, such as, as yourself, because so many people are on a digital space 24, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that if Freemasonry isn't part of that space, they may not feel connected to it than in, you know, offline in the quote unquote real world. No, yeah, with, with me, Masonry, um, to me, it's a reset every week that it reminds me of, of who I'm trying to be uh, in this world before I'm passed on. <clears throat> so to me, it, it was a reset and, and during COVID, 
I, I had difficult times and challenges, you know, remembering my obligations because I wasn't practicing Freemasonry. I, I had to practice it at home. And that's when really the discussion with, with Luke about the app really was like, okay, he, he found a platform that worked. He created it. I tweaked it. You know, hey, let's do this. He tried it. Well, let's try this. And which led to the, to the, the function and, the, and the, the platform that it is now. And it really started to bring my spirits back up about Freemasonry um, in general, especially talking with brothers who I met on the app and then realized they were in book, and Luke's book to uh, friend to friend and book club meeting who I got to meet some of them. And it was, it really came almost in a, for, uh, in a full circle because of Luke's projects that he's done virtually. And plus the app that we've created, it really tied things together and started making me feel that Masonic feeling again. Um, <clears throat> the app will allow brothers to see Luke's education. It'll allow brothers to see your podcast and the things that you're trying to do for the fraternity, which they may not have seen if they don't use the app. Um, other social media platforms are so filtered nowadays, at least in my opinion, that you may not be able to see it. You'd skip right through it or you didn't know how to search for it. I think what uh, it, it kind of a different vein a little bit, but I think what what really frustrates me or has frustrated me over the last year is we, we have a situation where, you know, we're, we're being asked to um, hunker down. Right. And I, I think it's this this virus is such that um, there are in a pandemic situation such that we, we can't just easily go over to to someone's house that may not understand this technology and help them get get set up like we normally would and so we're a little bit handcuffed I think and I think hopefully once things get a little bit back to normal we'll have that that opportunity uh, to encourage some of our members that are not as tech savvy to start to use these these applications and, and benefit um, in the examples that, that Dwayne just, just shared um, so it's it's been uh, it's it's been tough, and I'm not just talking about the app. I'm not talking about, um, it, it, you know, uh, Zoom calls and, and so forth. But just uh, just being able to to communicate with with the outside world has been very very difficult uh, for some of our brothers. Um, so I'm I'm really looking forward uh, in any way that I can uh, to help uh, those brothers feel feel more connected. Um, so um, as our numbers go down in, in Arizona, you know, I think that that that's gonna that's going to get better. And then once, if, if we have to go back into a pandemic type uh, situation, we'll have prepared our, our brothers in our community to, to be able to, to communicate better. Um, I, I wanted to, to also answer a question that you had, Cameron, about, you know, what are, what are your lodges doing uh, to, to assist with, with the community? Um, and, and I wanted to, to talk about an example that, you know, you, you don't need to necessarily I think in my opinion, deviate from some of the charities that you've been already supporting. And one of the big charities that uh, organizations that we support is our local school district. And I think I think mental health is is a crucial uh, uh, aspect of of this pandemic. And uh, we've we've continued uh, to focus on our public school system and uh, had uh, enormous focus. On a, on a very simple program uh, that encourages kids to read um, and, and kids to participate and, and for kids to learn. Because a lot of our uh, schools and probably in, in Ontario as well have, have been closed uh, for a good portion of, of the year. And so any lodge can, can, can do this. And we, we call it the Books for Bikes Club. Uh, and um, every book that a child reads in the school districts, uh, schools that, that participate in this program, uh, get a little um, sticker or a little, you know, piece of paper they throw into like a bingo, uh, bingo ball. And at the end of the semester or end of the school year, um, the more obviously books that you read, uh, the more likely you're you're going to be able to win the prize. And the prize is is a bike. Uh, and so we we have a, a lot of um, areas within within our city where kids don't have access or the funding to, to even own a bicycle. And so we've really uh, continued to, to focus on that 
And we're seeing amazing uh, participation from, from local lodges to support this uh, and amazing uh, response from, from these schools. So I think you know every lodge can, can do their part, big or small, uh, to support your community during the pandemic, whether it's you know physical, like you mentioned, PPEs, uh, devices, or um, supporting your your children and and school teachers uh, throughout the year by by other means. You know, staying on the charitable thing uh, there, Luke. Um, one of the aspects on the app is charity. So if there's members of a lodge um, that are advertising their charity or um, wanting donations, you know, the PPE for first responders, the caretakers, things like that. They're, able to, they're allowed to, this is another form of, if they're not able to do anything in their community because things are shut down, if you go onto the app and post this, it's, it's, it's been huge. And, and I've actually have tested this with a GoFundMe account that was created. There's actually two of them. There was a a lodge on the East Coast, I think it was North Carolina that was burnt down. I posted it on the app and the GoFundMe numbers actually from around the world started going up. So if we continue in the way that we're shut down, the, the app will allow uh, lodges and members to do the GoFundMes, to do those charitable things. Um, which is another form. I mean, we're not allowed to do things right now in person, at least not in a huge aspect that we're normally doing, but the app will allow us to do it in a virtual way, which is another reason the idea that we came up with. That, I like, um, I really like what Worshipful Brother Luke said, or the example he gave, because this is something I discussed a little bit on my podcast with, uh, doctor and right worshipful brother Oscar Allen is the the pandemic is taking up for obvious reasons such an amount of our you know column inches and minutes on the news and news feeds that it can be very easy to forget that there are a lot of other problems and needs that existed pre this pandemic and that still exist through this pandemic. And sometimes I think one of the dangers can be lodges and just any organization will, you know, pivot from a very successful charitable endeavor to try to focus on, on the pandemic, which is always a good thing to focus on, but that doesn't mean the initial need that the lodge or the group was dealing with went away. You know, reading is still very important. Education is still very important. And having a lodge or Masonic group, you know, focusing on that, it's probably more important now than ever because in a lot of cases, probably charitable endeavors that went towards educational programs may have dropped off during the pandemic. So to make sure that, you know, there's the expression goes, um, you don't want to forget the, uh, the important for the urgent, right? There may be an urgent issue, but it doesn't mean other issues aren't important. And that may be even a place where Freemasonry can do the most good in those areas that may not be getting the attention that they need because everybody is so focused on kind of the crisis of the moment. And, and you know, I applaud all the other lodges that that did feel a need to pivot as, as well. And uh, you know, Dwayne, I think mentioned very early on in, in our uh, conversation today uh, that that his uh, uh, group and, and his lodge were able to donate twenty five thousand dollars to a, to a food bank. And I think that's um, in, in direct response to, to the pandemic and the economic uh, uh, issues that are having having because of it. So I, I applaud. Uh, both both sides of, of that uh, portion, brother Cameron, uh, that uh, you know we're all we're all doing what we think is important, and each lodge has their um, you know ha has their uh, their opinions and their their passions, uh, and and we're seeing it uh, during uh, the midst of you know um, an incredible uh, unfortunate uh, situation. 
So before we uh, before we end this interview, and you guys can back to your you guys can get back to your beautiful sunny weather, and I'll get back to my cold and snow. Uh, throw in a a plug, like I've mentioned a few times now on, on this uh, on this interview, the link for Freemason Connect is in the description. But if you just want to do a quick plug once more, the process for signing up, and also if any Mason or candidate is interested in the book club. Can you talk a bit about how to sign up for that? I'll talk about the book club for a second. I'll, I'll uh, leave Lee Dwayne to talk about the, the app. But uh, yeah, the book club happens uh, every Tuesday, except for the first Tuesday of the month, uh, so that, that some of our brothers can actually uh, attend our stated meetings. Uh, it, uh, it can be found on uh, the uh, Oriental 20 uh, Facebook page. Uh, and uh, our our brother J.D. Aristia uh, does a great job of getting getting the word out about that. So if you just search Oriental Twenty Masonic Lodge on Facebook, you can get uh, access to that. We usually we should put it out uh, three or four days before the, the Tuesday. So check it out on you know Saturday or Sunday, and you can see that link there. Uh, anybody can join. Uh, it's on a, a Zoom call. Uh, it starts at uh, 7 p.m. Arizona time. Uh, Arizona uh, uniquely does not change their their time, uh, so we'll have to pivot. Uh, on the East Coast, you are currently two hours ahead of us. Uh, California, you are currently uh, one hour ahead of us, if I'm not mistaken. So, are uh, behind us. Uh, so that is the uh, Oriental Twenty, a friend of friend, and Masonic Book Club. Uh, not sure how to plug this app any more than we have. Um, <laughs> um, but just to give the brothers an, 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 another idea for a clean, verified app that will allow brothers to, to give back, to post unique education, to communicate with brethren around the world. And honestly, Cameron, without this app, I would have never have met you. I, would, I wouldn't have seen you in uh, Luke's uh, virtual meetings. So this is one way that we are trying to get Masons, regular verified Master Masons from around the world connected. We know there's a, a huge gap in communications um, from around the world and this app helps close that. Um, when, when I get a verification, and it's a new region, the first call I do is, uh, Luke, we need a new region. Okay, which one now? You know, we have Netherlands and Scotland, appendant bodies, and interesting enough, members are allowed to request a region. And it may not be just a jurisdiction. It might be, um, we, we, got, we got a request to do a Masonic Riders Association. There are a lot of Masons out there that ride motorcycles. So we created a group just for them. So they can talk about, hey, I'm gonna be in this area at a Masonic event for motorcycle riders. Um, you know, Australia, in, you know, England, uh, Shriners, all, all of these are on here. Um, we, we wouldn't have known to do this unless brothers uh, subscribe and request these things. If you want control of the entire app, we allow the users to do that. They have control on what they want to see, what they want to do. And the biggest thing is education. And, and to be honest, our, I guess our big selling point is name a lodger an independent body who would not want a, say, a $5,000 check to their Masonic charity from Freemason Connect, plain and simple. And you talk about the community outreach camera just a second ago. This app will allow us to do that, plain and simple. The, uh, the website for the, the app, uh, again, you can download it on your Android, uh, iOS, mm -hmm. uh, just a regular PC or through a web browser, mm -hmm. is freemason-connect.mn.co. Hope to see you there. And I hope to anybody who is listening to this or watching this, I also, I hope to see you there. I'm there pretty regularly. You will find uh, regular posts from Square and Compass, uh, the podcast, 
on the Freemason Connect uh, on the site, both on general and also within the Masonic Education Portal uh, in particular. And yeah, I hope, I hope to see it grow. I'm sure it will. It is a terrific app and both of, you, uh, both of you deserve a lot of credit for creating it and promoting it because I think it is going to be, or it already is and will continue to be an excellent tool for Freemasons in their Masonic journey. So thank you both so much for appearing on the podcast and for the app. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And with that, if you are, mind everybody, if you're listening to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, uh, iTunes, hit the follow, leave a review. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the red subscribe button, leave a comment, leave a like. And if you want to support the Square and Compass podcast, head over to Patreon. Uh, and you can throw us some money every month. And then we have different tiers and different products and services. We have... The thing I'm most proud of, or I think is the coolest, is we have scale models of the Windsor Masonic Temple available. They're great for Christmas villages, train sets, uh, and it's a great memento because this year the Masonic Temple is celebrating its 100th anniversary. And uh, it's a great keepsake to have. So with that, thank you guys both so much for joining me. And you guys get to now go back and enjoy your beautiful weather, and I'll just suffer up here in the north. We'll send you pictures on the app.